So the gift and the call of God are irrevocable. That's the opening line of that first reading today. So the gift and the call of God are irrevocable. So first I'd like to say a word about the season of All Saints and All Souls, and then um, also the pers a personal experience of the gift of uh, God's grace, and, and third, a word about St. Charles Borromeo, one of the great saints. So these uh, last few days, we've celebrated the Feast of All Saints and All Souls. This is an annual moment of grace that God gives us through the church to recall that the only real sadness in life, the only real failure in life, the only real tragedy in this life is not to be a saint. God is the total creator and lover who demands everything of his children, everything. Look at the crucifix on the wall. This is what God demands of his own son. So how could he demand less of the rest of us? That's a quote from uh, Leon Blois, a great French mystic and writer. Uh, the call to be a saint is irrevocable. So every single one of us at baptism has this call. On a personal note, just 10 days ago, I was privileged to participate in a morning funeral for a 15-year-old special needs boy his mother and his entire family were deeply saddened by his sudden loss. And his mother was at the funeral inconsolable. Her whole world was shattered. And that same evening of the funeral, the members of uh, and the uh, neighbors and family of Father Pinto and I walked across the way from his family's home to the home of this mourning uh, family. And while we were there, we were the recipients of a most remarkable grace in that home. The family requested that we pray the rosary with them. And during that prayer, gathered around the image of the sacred heart of Jesus, his love pouring out enthroned in that living room, all of us were touched by the peace and the unity and the love of God and his blessed mother in our midst. This experience surrounded and consoled this mourning family and all of us too, with a palpable love and mercy of God. So I'll never forget it. And finally, uh, Charles Borromeo. At the age of 22, he had already a civil and a, can a canon law degree. He, his uncle was the Pope and so he was a, appointed a cardinal. And then several years later, he was ordained a priest and Archbishop of Milan. Charles uh, could have been like a lot of those uh, Renaissance characters. He could have wasted his life uh, in many ways, but he threw himself into this vocation of shepherd of the church. He spent a great deal of time and energy reforming the liturgies, reforming the seminaries. In fact, the seminary structure that we have today is due in large part to this great saint, and renewing the priesthood of his day. He promoted praying the rosary with children and fostering religious education. He is the pat patron saint of catechists. He accomplished all of this by the age of 46, when he died from the plague, which he had contracted while he was taking care of plague-stricken uh, plague people. Many of his sermons are still available and uh, one sermon which I'd like to end with is this. He was speaking to the priests and he said, some of you complain that you are disturbed by distractions during prayer and even during the Holy Eucharist. So I ask you, what were you doing just before Mass? Were you preparing yourself for Mass by prayer and meditation? Or were you engaged in gossip about family, neighbor, business, and all of that? It's a good question for all of us to ask ourselves, how do we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist? I'm so happy that we're able to pray the rosary together. It's a good way to launch us into this most uh, wonderful of all prayers, the prayer of the Eucharist. <laughs>